Hello, this is Idiot with a Library Card, a podcast by me, Bennett. What I wanted to talk today about was a new book by Jordan Peterson. The title is 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos. It's an interesting book, um, and it falls into the self-help psychology section of the bookstore, which is not my favorite section of the bookstore, uh, especially the self-help. I'm not a big self-help book type person, but, you know, some people like it. Some people love those self-help books. Um, and this one's interesting. I, it's been a while since I've read a self-help book, and I'm probably out of practice whether it's a good self-help book or a bad one. There's some interesting things in it. I like I, I like his... I like some of his writing style, the stories he uses. He pulls a lot from the Bible and different. He, he's a big fan of Russian writers. Uh, he pulls a lot from from a group of Russian writers and and psychologists like Carl Jung. And so there's a there's a good mix of um, sort of examples he uses to pad the book when writing about these twelve rules. Um, I'm not going to go through all the rules. And actually, I, the book is interesting um it's it's not the greatest book i've ever read but it's a good book i enjoyed it i i think what i find interesting about it is that is the reaction and i'm gonna get to that later uh there is two passages i really like both are are biblical in nature the first one is about and it really both of them got me thinking about things um the first one is about the garden of eden and sort of the beginning of history, which I found interesting. It's it he makes it as a story of people actually becoming sentient beings, people becoming people when they eat the apple, when they eat the fruit of knowledge. Before that, they're not quite animals, but you can't really put moral moral blame on them. They don't really have morality. That's the the nakedness is a, a good example of that. You know. They don't have morality or, or sort of the the knowledge of good and evil, which is what the the tree is, and and that makes them more animal like than human like, which means that you can forgive things. You know, a, a lion. You don't get mad at a lion for eating a gazelle because that's what a lion does. So I I really I really thought that was interesting that they eat the fruit and they they become human, which is. Which is pretty cool, pretty cool thought, and I, I like that. And and it's sort of how how we start to to acknowledge history, where people have the knowledge of good and evil, and and it's not always great. You know, you have to you have to do things like think about the future, then think about your children more so than than animals, and maybe even think about their children. And you start to really get away from animals when we when we can think about the future. So that was it was a really interesting. A really interesting story, or a, a an interesting look at the story. And this is, by the way, I, I'm a I'm a big fan of Jordan Peterson. Not necessarily this book, and I don't want to put down the book too much. I I think for people who have their lives decently put together, it's it's an okay book. It's it's interesting, and it it sort of gives you reminders of things that you've already known. Like uh, the first rule is stand up straight with your shoulders back, which is something that I try to do this is a good way to go through life but you know some people don't but some people stoop and it's it, it's a good reminder it's something that no matter how bad everything's going in your life it's something you can do and it will probably improve your life if not minusculely you know if your life's going bad sometimes small victories are the are the only victories you can get and it's better than no victory it's better than more small losses which is usually what gets you into this into a bad place so sorry i went off on a tangent there so i i also he also does a really interesting story on jesus and his 40 days it's 40 days in the in the desert and and the three temptations satan offers him and and how it's how he talks about sacrifice and and you know sacrificing your body and sacrificing your your power and sacrificing other things for the the good of of the community and and sort of how you can you view you can view that story as what Jesus does 
is is what you can do, but I mean, obviously on a smaller scale. I, I really wanted to talk about this Garden of Eden thing because it it really did get my my wheels turning. I I like it also because Adam's one man, and and it's so interesting to think of our history as it is a humanity, but then our personal histories. When when do we bite that apple? When do we become sentient beings with a knowledge of good and evil? And can some people be denied that apple and it is a bad thing? And do those people those people become naive or psychopaths? Uh, either way, they don't have a knowledge of good and evil, and you need a knowledge of both to to be a active member of society. I think you need to recognize both and and have a knowledge of both to to really get by without being taken advantage of and without um, murdering a bunch of people. I think you sort of need to recognize both and and strive not to be one and to be the other. And obviously I'm talking about striving to be good and not evil. And that's, I, I, he didn't go too much on the personal history, but you can see it in sort of layers in the book. We all then get kicked out of our ignorant sort of paradise and go and have to to toil and suffer for our children and it, it's just it it has a good parallel and the the story itself has a very good parallel between personal and society sort of that's actually what the old testament does very well is it it gives you this personal story and it gives you this societal story so you have like the story of abraham and what he has to overcome, and and how he's a good person, and what he has to do to be good, and where he where he slips and falls and and messes up, and you you sort of get both. And it's a good story of personal growth and and sort of how a person can be. And then a lot of the Old Testament's about the Jewish society, and that has the same storyline. And there there's a, a nice balance between. King David actually is a probably better example than Abraham. You sort of have King David's story. He's a king, and it becomes the story of Israel, which is society. And, and you can see sort of morals and suggestions for society. And at the same time, there are morals and suggestions for personal growth and personal morality. And that's that's really what the Old Testament does very well. That being said, um, and it was just some things I found interesting about the book, and and his biblical series also does a really good job. It's very interesting, sort of how he breaks down the psychological analysis of the Old Testament. It's really interesting. I would suggest you look it up. And that that is the thing with Jordan Peterson. The book is okay. I'm not. It's it's not a great book. And I've read some reviews, and and it's weird because. Although it's not a super intellectual book, I, I've seen a lot of intellectuals rip it as just this this dumb as rocks type book that how could a Harvard professor write such a thing? There's a certain amount to that, but I don't think the book is the book is not a it's not a intellectual treatise. It's not a philosophical treatise, not a psychological treatise. It's a self help book. And I think it's a self-help book generally written for younger men, um, college and non-college educated. And actually, I would lean towards non-college educated because if you write it for college educated, it might go over the heads of some non-college educated. And so this is where I, I've read some reviews have been that have been very critical of that it's not – and. And some people I've seen on social media that that it's not this like everyone thinks he's a brilliant guy and it's not this brilliant book. And he is a brilliant guy. And part of his brilliance is being able to take these very complex ideas and give it to people who aren't who who aren't writing their doctoral thesis and give it to those people and let them understand it and and sort of bask in it. Basque isn't quite the right word, but understand it and absorb it. And for this book, it's understand it, absorb it, and try to apply it to their lives. This is the second issue I have with most most of the reviews that haven't liked it. There's been a lot of sort of politi- politicizing, I should say, of the book, and a lot of the left media is saying. I, I read somewhere, and gee, I shouldn't just 
the the reviews out there that this book is dangerous that it's telling these alt right figures that they don't need to help people and that's not what it's saying but you know it doesn't they don't need to help people and that it's just telling them what they want to hear and it's a pull yourself up from your bootstraps type book which it is but it's a self-help book so i i don't know what, what would a self-help book entail that doesn't say pull yourself up from your bootstraps the self-help book that this person apparently once written demands i don't know government or society fix your problems that would be the self-help book and then it wouldn't be a self-help book it would actually become a political book so a self-help book i I think by definition needs to be a book that tells you to pull yourself up from your bootstraps because if it doesn't it's it's not a self-help book it's a other people help me book so and part of it is i i mean one of the chap one of the rules uh, rules chapter it's the same thing in this book i mean one of the rules is assume that the person you are listening to might know something you don't and that's great i i i think that on a political spectrum is is good i listen to people from the other side of the aisle and actually listen to them don't listen to them and wait to have a counter argument I mean, unless you're in a political debate, I I love having political political conversations with people who differ from me greatly because I know what I think, and I've I've been convinced of you know I I've been convinced of different things, and and it's made me sort of open my eyes and go, oh, you know what, this is this is a good point, and and maybe I should add this to my political thought repertoire, if that makes any sense. I don't think it does does it this is a podcast and nonsense well it might get better might so i i think as a self-help book it's good and this is sort of the last thing i'm gonna i'm gonna say about the book the book to me is if i rank what dr peterson's done um i think the biblical lectures on genesis have been amazing they've been really good and really interesting future authoring authoring program seems to help people and sort of in this vein uh and that's been it's been helpful to people the maps and meaning course and he's written that book now i haven't read that book and it's apparently much more complicated than this book but that course i i've i've taken the course i mean i've watched the course on youtube and that's it's really interesting and really great so he's done a lot of good things i would say this book to me and i i think i'm pretty decently read is is one of the lesser things he's done but i also think people who are in a bad way it's going to help them and and he says that people have come up to him on the street and told him that they were in a bad way and read his book or listened to his lectures and they've they've really turned it around uh so and the controversy surrounding him is a little ridiculous i think the people who who hate him it's it's weird that that people would say he's this monster. I, he he's said some controversial controversial things, but what's become controversial has been weird. I I mean it's it's not he, there's no demand for violence. It's sort of like, you know, I don't think calling someone Z or Zer is reasonable. And let's be honest, I mean I I don't know anyone in my daily life that's demanded to be called Z or Zer. And and frankly, I, I've never had anyone demand to be called something outside of normal vocabulary. I, I don't know if I've ever had someone demand to be called anything. I would say there's I'm a pretty polite person, so they may not have to. They probably wouldn't have to demand to be called something because I, I wouldn't be the type of person to call someone something. So if you're looking for a good self-help book. I would say 12 Rules for Life is is a good self-help book. Some of the and the people who have been critical of it have been weirdly not critical of it as a self-help book, but as some sort of like it's supposed to be this doctoral thesis that's supposed to blow everyone away. I mean, Jordan Peterson is a doctor. I'm assuming he wrote one and it was probably more in depth than this book, but again, this book's a self-help book for a wide variety of people you know the certain newspapers need to write for people at a certain level of reading and comprehension and i mean you could rip that but it's important that they do that to a certain degree 
you don't want to write over your audience's head. So again, it's a self-help book. I know I've said that like 30 times. It's a it's a fine self-help book. I, I think it's not the most important thing Jordan Peterson's done, but that's cool. I mean, you know, that's good. It, it's, it's the best self-help book I've ever read out of like the two or three I've ever read. So, you know... Yeah, I, I I think it's worth a read. You might want to wait till it gets in the library. I was such a I'm such a big fan of Jordan Peterson and his lectures that I actually I bought the book on Amazon. So technically, this shouldn't fall into the idiot with the library card. Although they have internet in the library, so I could have bought it, you know, at the library on their computer. We can go with that, and that's what makes it idiot with a library card. You need a library card to log on to those computers, don't you know? All right, well, I think that's all I have, and I'm one of those people that sort of fades out of a conversation, so...